Halloween is just around the corner. So if you want to learn how to corpse a regular old skeleton to look like him, then keep watching because that's what I'm going to show you in this video. Easy DIY of how to corpse a regular old plastic skeleton. All right. I hope you guys enjoy this video. All right. So let's get started with the supplies you're going to need. You are going to need number one, a heat gun which we just got at Harbor Freight. You're gonna need some sort of a clear coat. This is just what I'm using. It's uh, just a Krylon acrylic crystal clear so that the blood won't come off of your corpse because I'm gonna have mine outside. You're gonna need some sort of clear plastic. I just used these little cheap garbage bags, real thin clear bags or painter's plastic also works. To make the blood, you're gonna need clear school glue and some either red, well, you definitely need red, but either blue or green food coloring, any kind, any brand, it doesn't matter. And a paintbrush or a toothbrush. I used a toothbrush the first time, but I've gone through all my old toothbrushes. And a little container to mix it in, of course. You're gonna need some wood stain now this is just the stuff I'm using. I'm sure you could use any kind of wood stain you want. This one's in the color mahogany and you're going to need something to wipe it off. I'm just using this nasty old rag that's in the garage that's used for everything. That's the first one I made. I think he turned out pretty cool. So now I need to make this guy. Now what happened with him we had a prop outside last year and it was a teeter-totter and his arm broke off after being there all season and so did his leg. So instead of throwing him out, I'm just going to, I just uh, corpsed him as you see this year and I'm gonna put like rats. I'm gonna set a rat right in here and I'm just gonna throw him on the ground and of course I'm gonna take that screw out of there because I just did this to see how it would turn out and I like this. So I'm gonna show you guys. So I went out and bought him. I got him at Party City. He's three foot tall. He was $12.99. So this project really is pretty inexpensive. So you could turn him into something like this and they're all gonna look different. So I can guarantee you he's not gonna look like exactly like that. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so if you do this, in a garage, this would be much easier. But I just decided to use a plastic bag only because of the wind. It's really windy. So it's kind of a pain in the butt. All right, so put your little skeleton in there. Make sure you start, let's start with the head. So you kind of have to hold, like you're choking them. Put them in a choke hold. Then what you do without burning yourself, be very careful. This thing is super hot. I just put it on the low and you should be able to see how it's starting to like shrink wrap itself. It's like forming to the actual, see how the plastic is melting. Let me stop real quick so you guys could get a good view. See how it's kind of starting to form. It's just the plastic melting on itself. Now once you paint it and everything that'll look like tendons and stuff like that. So I'm not, not going to do much talking here. I'm just going to see the wind. All right. Uh, wrap it under his body. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and do his head and show you guys that. And then I'll continue. Don't hold it on there too long or it will totally melt. Take your time with this. I am gonna, I have a specific project I'm gonna do with him. I am going to make him into a barbecue. I'm gonna tie him up on a pole as if he were being barbecued. So I'm not too worried about the way the back of him looks cause I'm gonna zip tie him to the 
barbecue skewer. But just take your time. You can always rip off the plastic and start over. The arms you want to spread out a little bit so that they're not, unless you want them to be like mummified with his arms closed like this. But I want him to have his individual arms only because they're going to be above his head when I do it. So in order for that to happen, I'm going to go ahead and cut the plastic almost to the armpit. So he has his flexibility. Now I'm going to move the rest of the plastic under his body so it's out of my way. All right, wrap the hand up real good. You get the picture. And then just start using the heat gun again. One arm done. Now keep doing the same thing to the rest of them. I need to cut my plastic over here for his other arm. All right, so let's do his torso now. You hold it on a little bit longer, then you'll get these holes like right there. And that's fine because I want him to kind of look like his body and his skin is just decomposed and nasty. So a few holes here and there, that's okay. If you don't like it, just take the plastic off and start over again. This is definitely not a science. Now for his eyes, I do want a little bit of a gap right here. I'm gonna try to burn a little hole. One of, see, there you go, and his eye. So the plastic has gone away from his eye now. All right, so I'm gonna keep doing the same technique to the whole thing, and then we'll move on to the next step. The legs, you would do the same as the arms. All right, guys, so it's probably been maybe 20 minutes and I got the look that I wanted. I used probably four of those little bags because I put an extra bag on his head and I redid it. See, now there's a little hole there, a little hole there, one hole in the eye. I'm pretty happy with his ribs and stuff. I know once I start putting the paint and the stain on him, he'll look all right. I'm not too happy with this. I'll probably heat that again and see if I could form it more to his body. But for the most part, this is the most difficult part because then you see little spots you miss and then like his rib cage was totally bare on this side. So I just put another bag on it and then I heat gunned it on top of that. So. Just keep working on it till you have the look that you like. And then we will move on to the next step. All right, so here comes the fun part, the stain. So as I said, the first time I used a toothbrush, this is just an old brush because after this process, it's pretty much gonna get thrown out, I would think. All right, so just put it all over him as you see. Don't be neat about it. I actually like this is only my second one I've made, but I do like the toothbrush better. So as you can see, just get it all over him. Just going to show you guys a small part here. 
What you want to do is you're trying to let it get it in all those cracks and crevices so that when you wipe it off, there is still some stain left and those creases. All right, so I'm just gonna do this a little bit so you guys can get an idea. I'm gonna do his neck a little bit here. Then we'll wipe him down and you'll see what he looks like. Then we'll be on to the next step. This is actually one of the easiest steps. The biggest pain in the butt, I will say, is actually shrinking the plastic on him, especially if it's a windy day. Ugh. All right, so I'm not being cheap with this stuff. And you also don't need very much of this. All right, so there you go. You've put it on him and now you're just going to take a rag or paper towel, whatever you might have. And you can kind of tell. There, you don't want to wipe it all off. All right, so he's starting to come together. What I did do though with my other one, which I forgot to do with this one, is I kind of purposely left his teeth out. So on this one, since I kind of put the plastic over it, I kind of tried to wipe it because I kind of like that look of his teeth kind of poking through. Let me show you the other one. See, I covered his top teeth, but the bottom teeth, I made sure I kind of let poke through. I think it looks a little more realistic. So keep that in mind when you're putting the plastic on him. All right, so that's what he looks like right now. And I'm gonna finish staining him and wiping him. I'm gonna let him dry. I'm gonna do the front, let it dry, do the back, let it dry, and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, guys, now he is just about dry. I don't feel any, I don't have any of the stain on my hands. I've let him dry, oh, I don't know, about an hour. All right, so you can always use the store blood that you could find just if you don't want to make blood. Like I said before, I have some that I bought last year, but it's in the shed and I don't feel like digging around for it. So get some clear school glue and just, I don't know exactly how many drops, just a quite a bit. I'd say that was probably about 20 drops. And I put two drops of green in there. You can also use blue or you don't have to use any. I just think it makes it look a little bit darker. So it's not, I don't know, it just looks better to me if I use blue or green. I only put like one drop or two of the blue or green. You can always do a little bit of red and just keep mixing it until you think that you like the look of it. So there's the blood that I've made. Now since I'm going to have this prop outside like I said before, I'm going to spray it with some clear acrylic. But this is pretty much what I do. I think that looks pretty good. And I'm gonna put some around his eyes. Maybe around the neck, where it might look like he's got blood and his old muscles, the old tissue, whatever. You don't have to be neat about it. Anywhere you think, whatever looks good to you. There's no right or wrong way with this. It's Halloween, you're supposed to have fun with it. I'm trying to do just around the edges, but I'm gonna let a little bit drip down. And I like the consistency of this too. So, Put it wherever you think. 
You can always wipe it off as well. So it gives them a red tinge. So I'm going to finish doing this. I'm just going to go around the edges where I think he needs a little extra blood. I think he looks pretty darn cool already. See how I did his arms? I didn't do all of it. I'm just doing it here and there. Don't have to get too crazy with it. Or you can. Take your time. I plan on making some more of these. Maybe not just full skeletons, but some stuff I'm going to make with the Dollar Tree stuff I picked up. Put a little bit on his wrist here. So I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm not going to bother doing the back on mine. Only because, like I said before, I'm going to put him like on a barbecue skewer. So we're only going to see the front of mine because he's going to be cooked. So I don't need to worry about the backside. Although I did stain the backside, I'm not going to worry about it. I'll put some on the inside here. Some in his pelvis. Like I said, I'm just going to do around his muscles where I think he might need some of this stuff. All right, so there he is. I'm going to finish off his legs, let him dry, and we'll continue to the next step. All right, guys, so he is dry. I moved him. So I wanted to put him somewhere where when I spray this uh, clear acrylic spray paint on it, it won't spray onto the cars or the house or anything I don't want it to be on. So I know it looks wet, but it's dry because it's clear glue. So the glue gives it that wet look to it. So all we gotta do is spray him down I'm going to go ahead and spray him with a light coat first because mine's going to be outside and I really don't want, since it's just washable kids glue, I don't want it coming off because he will be outside for the whole season. Actually, I'll probably put him out, we're in September, probably put him out next weekend, which is going to be the second week in September. All right, so I'm going to give him a light coat, as you see. I'll let him dry, which shouldn't take very long, maybe 10 minutes, 15. I'll give it 15 minutes. And then I'll give him another clear coat. I'll flip him over, and then he will be done and ready for the rotisserie. <laughs> 